You are watching Adjuster TV. Hey IAs and welcome to the IA Path Auto IA Show where we walk you through how to become a successful independent adjuster by starting, diversifying and increasing your earnings with auto claims. If you're ready, we can get started right now. On today's show, we're going to talk about the coronavirus with two industry leaders. They're going to walk us through what they're hearing in the industry, the effects we're seeing, and some of the possible outcomes long term. They're also going to answer the question definitively as to whether we are viewed as essential with these government edicts, whether we can continue working if we have claims. For all the best tips, tricks, and tools, head on over to Adjuster TV's YouTube channel and click the subscribe button. Also, don't forget to hit the bell notification so you'll get notified every time we have a new video. Now, without further ado, let's jump into an interview I did with CEO and President of SEA Appraisal, Tim Davis Jr. And following him will be an interview I did with Ernie Bray, the CEO of ACD. All right, IAs, I am joined uh, by Tim Davis Jr., uh, President of SEA. And Tim is on the front lines of everything that's going on. For those who don't know, if you're more on the property side, SEA Appraisals is the largest auto damage appraisal company and other claims that they handle in the nation that I know of. They have a huge volume. And so they're going to feel the effects of uh, coronavirus as much as anybody. So I wanted to bring Tim on um, to really hear what is going on. So Tim, thanks so much for taking time today. I know you guys are busy and Thank everything's you, crazy. Chris. Chris, it looks like uh, like you're bringing new meaning to uh, shelter in place. So can you can you tell us where you are right now? <laughs> I can't give an exact location. No, I'm uh, in Florida, uh, just not too far away from Stewart, Florida, on the sailboat. So, kind of still doing our thing, floating around and about. Yeah, yeah, that looks like a, a neat place to be. Well, I'm excited to be here, and thank you for uh, inviting me to join your podcast. Absolutely. And for those who don't know, SEA is based out of California. So California is going through it. They're seeing a lot out there um, and there's a lot of lockdown going on. So Tim, first and foremost, the, the initial reason I reached out was IAs keep asking me because they want answers from somebody. Are we as IAs, as auto damage appraisers, as independent adjusters, are we able to keep working if we have claims, legally speaking? with these restrictions. You bet, you bet. Um, you know, watching the news this morning, we see that there are 13 states that are under order right now uh, to stay at home. And those 13 states constitute one out of three Americans that are under that order in their respective states or counties to stay at home. So, um, so that is, you know, this is unprecedented for any of us in, our, uh, in this space. Um, no matter how long you've been in the industry, this is unprecedented. Um, so, um, so we're, when we look at it, what is essential and what is not essential services, we do believe uh, that we are an essential service, and let me go into why. Um, transportation and logistics. There's different categories that each of the states have that go into what are essential sectors of the economy that need to stay operational or, and, are deemed, and are deemed essential. So one of them is transportation, it, transportation and logistics. 35% of SCA's business is on-road truck and trailers, um, uh, agricultural equipment, um, uh, and, and, every, and, and every other POS of industrialized equipment we get out and, and inspect. So the transportation, the logistics, getting, uh, you know, it's those trucks that are on the road that get our food and products across the country for all of us to be able to sustain ourselves. So transportation and logistics is one area we need to keep these vehicles on the road, and, uh, and that's where we fall into that chain of, um, of essential services. The second category is auto care uh, or auto repair. Um, what, we, what we see is that American, uh, uh, Americans and their automobiles, this is how we get to the grocery store, this is how we get to the doctors, this is how we get to the pharmacist. Uh, people getting around to handle those essential duties, they need to have their automobiles to do it. Appraisers are part of this automobile ecosystem that keeps cars running um, after a loss. And um, so, yeah, so that's the second sector. And then the third sector that we fall into is financial services. 
financial services insurance companies are a part of a financial institution, and we again are a part of that ecosystem that keeps these, these, um, these financial institutions moving. Claims and insurance are a big part of our financial, of our financial infra infrastructure in the country. So those are the three categories that, that we see that, that, uh, that our industry of, of field appraisers and of insurance work clearly fall into. Yeah, there was one article in, you know, state released, you know, guidelines of essential that I found that was saying, you know, under insurance, if you can do it from home, sure, you have to do it from home. That's mandated. But you can't right. do auto damage appraisals a lot of the times from home just because the vehicle's too severe, can't get it to a repair shop. So that's where I saw, like, that's clear right there that we, we kind of fit in there. But I'm glad to have your more detailed explanation and, uh, you know, of those three different areas. So, Tim, that brings me to my next question, which is, is SCA still up and running? Are you guys still able to do everything you guys normally do to support us in the field? A hundred percent. Right now, I am the only person in the office right now. Normally, we have at least 70, 70, uh, um, 70 people in here that constitute um, our entire claim service center, and I'm the only person that's working in the office right now. Um, we are, everybody is working from home successfully. Thankfully, our IT team was able to get an expedite getting everybody off-site. Uh, and these internal employees are there to support our client network and our service network. And then our appraisers across the country, we're just making sure that we do our best to communicate with them, not only about what is legal uh, in these governor decrees that are coming out, but most importantly, way more important than what is legal and what is not, uh, but what is safe and making sure that they know that they have the full discretion to refuse an inspection um, and that, you know, and things that we can do and giving them best practices for setting expectations with the vehicle owner when they're on the phone with them. Things like uh, reminding them of how vigilant they are in making sure that they don't spread this disease and that they absolutely will make this an interaction-free inspection and really um, I don't even need to physically interact with you given this circumstance. Normally we do, obviously. Um, but if we do, certainly we will keep at least six feet distance. We're wearing gloves. We're wearing masks. We're making sure that we're doing everything we can to make the public feel comfortable. Um, and obviously when an appraiser comes out, it's only one person coming out. And a lot of the decrees and orders are about gatherings of 10 or more. So that's another reason why I think that we... So are you recommending that appraisers, you know, I, I've seen this on a few different places, great information for, you know, appraisers out there in the field. Are you guys recommending maybe we don't get the odometer photo and things, maybe we don't mess with people's interior. What are you guys kind of seeing there? That's obviously, normally, you got to go in the interior of the vehicle, you got to turn it on, you got to look at the odometer. What are you guys saying as far as that? What's kind of the standard practice right uh, now? Best judgment, and I really want, again, uh, it's safe, the safety of our appraisers and the safety, safety of the vehicle owners are paramount. Um, I do want our appraisers using latex gloves if they have to get into the vehicle, and I would like them using good judgment. Things like, um, unless, the, unless the client's uh, guidelines specifically say get a photo of the registration, we're going we're gonna to remove that, fire, that, that photo requirement because we really don't want people inside. Um, if they can, we want to avoid as much exposure as possible. Totally. Perfect. I appreciate that. Yeah. So uh, next up, a lot of us who are sitting here, whether we're working or not working, we're wondering what kind of impact is this having on the claim volume in the industry? I imagine just sitting, you know, on the, on the couch at home here that it's significant, but what are you guys seeing? Uh, for the first time in 40 years of business uh, in this space, um, SCA has seen over the course of the last week about a 30% decline in business in new assignments. We're also tracking the date of losses. We're seeing that where we're not getting losses, we can see that, you know, where the dates of losses are, you know, and how that corresponds with the trajectory and the timeline of this crisis. Um, but, um, but yeah, there, uh, um, uh, uh, what, what we see uh, overall right now, I consider we are in week three of this crisis. Last week was when we first saw the decline in business, and, uh, and it was steep throughout the course of the week. And it was the first time, like I said, in 40 years of business that we've ever seen anything directly impact our, our business, not any recessions, 
um, you know, so not any, any any wars or anything like that have, have created, at least in, in our 40 years of history. But we don't know where the bottom is. We do know that we're still continuing to receive hundreds of assignments per day that need to be completed, and we're getting those out to our appraisers. <clears throat> and we're just, but one thing we do know, because one of the things that I'm spending my time doing is being in constant verbal communication with our customers, our suppliers, and by suppliers, I mean appraisers, and, uh, and our employees, and listening to everything that is going on. Everybody that I talk to feel that this is a temporary situation. These are people that are, have extreme industry and extreme institutional knowledge in our space believe that this is a temporary circumstance and that as, as we get past this coronavirus that we're going to see life as we know it. Um, you know, of course, we all change when we go through these major storms, and there are certain changes that are hastened and accelerated uh, in, in, uh, in, in, in all industries. Uh, but we don't see, and, and the people that I'm speaking to, we don't see huge seismic changes in the industry. We see adjustments, changes, slight changes in consumer behaviors, but not seismic changes in, in the uh, supply chain of, of insurance services. Awesome. That kind of leads us right into the next question, which is, um, you know, are the carriers saying they're going to need us? I mean, are they just going to go carte blanche, photos only, and forget the appraiser, forget human interaction? Or when this kind of dies down, are we going to kind of resume business as normal, as you can tell? I believe that we're going to, be, that we're going to resume business as, as normal. It may be, I mean, we all know on the news, on the news about, you know, stretching out the arc that that could make the, the duration of this last longer, which is, you know, bad for the economy, but good for humanity. So, you know, that's, you know, what, what needs to be done. Um, but long-term, I, again, everybody is bullish that I'm speaking to. Um, the good news is is that everybody has a lot of has more time on their hands, especially at the carrier level, level. So it's a good time to communicate. Awesome. So what should we as IAs? What should us who are on the ground floor, whether we're slowed down, whether we have no work, whether we're holed up with our families, which is once again a great thing in some ways? Um, what should we be doing with this time? It's a great question, Chris. I, you know, I think one of the most important things that we can do. Uh, during these times is be creative and look for opportunities. And one of the things that I'd like to share with your listeners is what a great opportunity it is to build relationships. Um, you know, the relationships that you build while people are going through difficult times are very, become much more binding and much more real relationships more quickly. And, um, and I encourage you to take advantage to really build those, com those human connections um, with your customers, um, with your with with the providers of your work um, and and certainly with the vehicle owners, um, you know one of the things that we as insurance professionals are very very good at, um, and it's likely one of the reasons that we chose this industry is because we're very good at delivering empathy, and what we do as insurance as pro insurance professionals is ease people when they are in a time of distress. So this is right in our wheelhouse as insurance professionals to know how to ease anxiety, help people through, um, you know, through these trying times, and, and hopefully um, not only provide um, a good insurance service, but also provide some good humanity. Absolutely. I know when I would get sent out to catastrophe storms, it was some of those heartbreaking things that I ever saw and experienced, but those were the times where it was like, this is why we do what we do. It's not about the daily grind of doing 10 claims, bump, bumper yeah. bumper hits where it's like no big deal, whatever. It was the times when it was like, oh my gosh, I had to spend an hour with this person because their entire life was uprooted because of a flood, because of a hurricane, yeah. because of you know their windows being destroyed from a hailstorm. And so I'm with you. I, I, I appreciate your time uh, today. You and you know I really appreciate what you guys at SCA are doing to try to help keep us educated, to keep us moving on and um, – Appreciate the relationship that we have with you guys, that you guys work with our students and you're helping people come into the industry. And, you know, as I was reflecting on this, I'm like, this is really unprecedented, like you said. Everybody having to stop work, basically all industries affected. But then it's another benefit to, to being an I I never realized is that the, the economy and even the governments recognize being an appraiser or being an adjuster as such an essential service that even when everybody else sure is asked to stop, there's still work. We're still having work. There's still things happening. And that 
that's something obviously I never thought we'd need to think about. But now that we have seen it, it's like, wow, we really are in a position to fill a need that our, our entire world has, really. So I think it's a special right. place to be. Tim, thank you so much you for know, your time. Oh, go ahead. You know, thank you. Oh, thank you, Chris, and thank you for giving me this opportunity to speak to your to your viewership. I would like to. This morning, I caught something in the newspaper that I thought was was really good, and it it inspired me, and I'd like to share it with with all the business owners across uh, across your viewership. And that is um, this very simple quote: is that, uh, and it said that you know, in times of crisis, poor companies fail, average companies survive, and great companies thrive. So, you know, to all the business owners out there, and so many of your viewers are, 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 are sole proprietors and are, are business owners, um, remember that. There is opportunity in this, and look for it. Um, and when the tide turns, trust that your customers will remember the support you gave them when we were going through this tough time. So with that, again, thank you, Chris, for giving me the, this opportunity to speak with you. Thanks, Tim. I'm sure we will talk real soon. I look forward to it. All right, IAs. I am joined here by Ernie Bray, the CEO of ACD. And for those who don't know if you're in the property space and maybe you're not doing daily claims, uh, ACD is a company that handles a large volume of auto damage appraisal claims and property, motorcycle, heavy equipment, everything you can imagine on the daily claim side of business. So, Ernie, thanks for taking the time out uh, to talk with us today. Hey, no problem, Chris. Glad to be on. So, Ernie, you know, we're, we're in some really crazy, unprecedented times, and I keep getting asked, and I didn't, I answered it, best of my knowledge, but I, I wanted to get you and some other industry leaders on to, to really answer the question properly, is are IAs, are auto damage appraisers able to keep working? Are we considered essential personnel right now? From what I'm seeing out there, of course, there, this, is just, this is dynamically changing. This is a fluid situation. Uh, but from what we've read by many of the states that in the insurance side of the business, it is still an essential uh, part of the business out there. Uh, but of course, it's important that appraisers understand that each local area may have varying laws. But during this time, appraisers have the ability to still work even if it's through photo estimating and other tools, which we can talk about later on. But like I said, it's really key to understand this is a very fluid situation. But from what we're seeing, it is part of that insurance sector from everything we've read. Perfect. And that's kind of what I, I came away with was my conclusion, at least for now, two days ago, who knows right. in two you, days. You never who know. I mean, th 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 this, is, this is unprecedented. I mean, anybody running a business right now I mean, it, it's hard to, you know, we'll look back on this someday. We'll look back on this and go, how did we get through this? But, you know, the thing is, we will get through this. But, yeah. you know, if for anybody running the business right now, it, it's just so much uncertainty. And that's the biggest, I think, the biggest challenge is dealing with uncertainty. Absolutely. We're going to call this BC before Corona. You know, like this is going to, this, yeah. is, this is a mark on the calendar that things right. changed in America worldwide. And so it's definitely... Uh, we have no idea what's going to happen, but as of right now, Ernie, it looks like we're essential. We're able to keep working if we have claims. So the question becomes, are you guys, is ACD 100% operational? Are you guys able to support the IAs and support your clients at this time? Yes, we're, we have, uh, we've moved our whole uh, client care team and quality assurance team. So everybody's working remotely right now. And in this day and age, we all know uh, a lot of this can be done at home or from a remote location as long as you've got that power of the internet, you know, cloud-based technology. Uh, but yeah, we're completely up, operational, and helping carriers by the day. I think the biggest challenge, a lot of carriers are having to move massive amounts of staff home, and they may not have been prepared for that because they have, you know, more, their systems may not be compatible. So it's really a challenge probably for a lot of carriers. But I think we're, we're here for, the, for our clients, and, um, and we're set to go. Awesome. Yeah, I think a lot of insurance companies have built in office networks with security and all that. And then yep. just to go, oh, here, just get all that sensitive data to home. That's exactly. a totally different problem. Uh, I didn't even think about that previously. So, all right, well, next up, what kind of impact are you guys seeing in ACD on the claim volume? Well, uh, claim volume has been pretty level right now because I think there may have been a backlog of files that haven't been able to be handled. Uh, we don't know where it's going to go. That's the thing. I don't know whether there will be an influx of claims uh, from carriers that are backlogged and they want to use photo estimating. I've seen a huge push toward that now of the alternative methods of inspection. 
Um, but right now we're seeing a pretty level, but I mean, like I said, it's unknown. I expect if there's less driving going on and there's more of the, uh, you know, uh, quarantines going on, there will be a, a drop in volume. That's just going to happen. That's what we're suspecting, uh, you know, anticipating, but it's, like I said, still very fluid, but I think in my opinion, a lot of carriers will start to move toward alternative methods of inspection, which still uh, appraisers have the op opportunity to still be utilized. And I'll explain that later. Yeah, and that leads right into the next question, which is, well, are insurance carriers saying they're even going to need us as IAs at some point? Or are they just kind of going to go all oh, carte blanche, photos only, and say, who needs a field guy anymore? You know, what are you hearing? Well, I, I still think when this, the dust settles, they're going to, we're going to go back to some of the traditional methods of field appraising. Of course, that's going to happen. But I think right now, uh, I think there's going to be the opportunity for independent appraisers out there, adjusters, people with these skills to be able to write off photographs. There's going to be that potential opportunity to flex in and doing that in certain areas. So the appraisers can still be utilized, but they're going to have to write off of photos temporarily while we're going through this crisis. It's definitely different skill sets. I've done a lot of photos only mm -hmm. e estimate writing on this side. And it's, it's very different from like looking at the car, right. getting to touch everything. It's a yeah. totally different kind of process and feeling and, and you're way less confident in what you're doing. So, um, well, that next question then, how should we as IAs, what should we be doing as appraisers with this time to prepare for what I've called the afterwards? Well, you know, I look at it this way, and then you look at this whole, the whole thing that's going on right now, is that you kind of have to take a sort of a philosophical approach to this, that we can't control things that go on that are outside our control. But what we can do is we can control what we can do. And as appraisers, realize, hey, you've got a skill. You can write appraisals. There are companies out there that need that. So don't be afraid to reach out to the vendors that you work for and say, hey, do you need some assistance in photo estimating? There may be an influx. You know, I'm here. Don't be afraid to remind the people that you work for what you can do. So call up the vendors you work for. Say, hey, you know what? If you have photo estimates come in, I'm available. I can do these for you. Um, that is very important because a lot of people are probably in a crisis mode out there at, you know, in, at different companies, and they're just trying to get these claims resolved. So be, you know, go out there, put yourself out there, and let people know what skills you have. And while this is going on, we don't know how long it's going to go on, but you know, you got to just be able to realize you got the different skills. Things will, things will go back to normal eventually, but this is an opportunity, and you can seize this opportunity to diversify the offerings you have as an IA to the customers that you have. Yeah, and um, what I think is kind of in these unprecedented what, what shocked me when I found out that, oh, wow, we are essential personnel. And I was looking around and going, well, you never think about that. Like, what? how does the world view appraisers, right? Are we essential? Are we not? I mean, like, everybody in every industry is affected right now. But yet some of us in this industry, we actually are still able to work in different ways. And that's rare. Like if you're a waitress, your job's basically gone right now. There's nothing you can do. I know. It's shocking. I mean, restaurants, people with one day they have a job next day are gone. And then so it's, it's just, like I said, even myself, it's, it's still surreal. I guess this is the statement to say surreal that as is, the whole world, has almost come to a, the, a halt with this thing. So it's, it's just, it's unbelievable. But I mean, I look at it like this, times like this, these are when you, each of us as individuals get to dig down deep and we get to say, you know what, this is where we find out who we are and how we you know, go through adversity and we make it through and it makes you stronger because nobody knows, you know, you, you're, you're each, everybody's individual businesses are gonna be pushed to the max you're going to wonder, are you going to survive? You know, how are, how is the economy going to survive? All these things are going through. But the one key thing is that you can make it through. And this is the things you'll look back on and say, you know what? It made me stronger. And uh, we're all going through it right now. We're really like, like people say, we're all in it together. We're all going through this together. Everybody, nobody's left unaffected by this. So it's all a learning aspect for everybody. Totally. Well, Ernie, I appreciate your time so much. Before I let you go, 
Do you have any guesses? And we know that's all they are because right now we have, like I said, we keep saying we have no idea what's going to happen. Do you see any long-term effects from this on how claims are handled, on how the industry goes? It's hard to say. It's hard to say. It really will play out. I think this may be an opportunity for photo estimating to get more of a hold in some aspects. And I think it's also an opportunity for independent appraisers themselves to add this to their, um, you know, to the things they offer. Because I mean, if photo estimating takes off to a level, you have the skill to write appraisals. This is another tool that you can offer in the offerings that you have to your vendors. And I think that's really key. It's, it's just another tool in the toolbox. And I think it's a, it might make photo estimating a little bit more accepted, but it all still remains to be seen. Yeah, I was uh, marveling because I did a podcast recently about this, like what, what might happen, right? And mm -hmm. one of the things I was like, well, photo estimating was kind of went really high for a while. Everyone was so excited about it. They kind of yeah. went down and it decided to kind of wore up. And now it's like, well, they got no choice but to kind of let it go back up. And it's like, are we going to see it come back down? Or are we going to see it like, well, there's unseen benefits that we never thought of in this new awareness time of uh, <laughs> interaction yeah. and germs and <laughs> biological warfare, so to speak, against nature. It's, yeah. it's really interesting. But I really appreciate you taking the time. I'm glad that you and a few other leaders were able to get on here and say, hey, look, this is what's going on. And we're all in it together. The businesses, yeah. the individual IAs who have their own business, and the major firms. We're yeah, all I, I, trying to figure yeah, this out. And I just, I, I leave people with this last thought. The thought really is this. You know what? You got to take, hey, with this going on, focus on your health. Take care of yourself. You know, take care of your families. That's the most important thing. Because when it's all said and done, that's what matters the most. And all this stuff, the dust will settle. That'll be all done in the end. But just we'll all get through this together. And like I said, you know, your health and your family is number one. Take care of that, you know. Awesome, Ernie. Thank you so much. I'm sure we'll talk real soon. All right. Have a good one, Marcus. If you're interested in becoming an independent auto damage appraiser or auto adjuster as a part of a diversified IA career, head on over to IAPath.com and click the How to Find Work button. We have a free video course that walks you through exactly how to start your career and establish your IA business. Until next week, thank you so much for watching the Auto IA Show. Keep walking your path and claiming your life.